This nice large window that I picked up at the uh, hardware store. It's on the scratch and dent window. I don't even see a scratch or dent on it, but it must have been someone ordered too many windows and had extras. But anyway, I got it for 70 bucks. Pretty good deal. So we're going to put it in this hole right here. And uh, so you get a nice view of Mount Blanc. And that's why I was most of my attention here is have a nice view of Mount Blanc and we're not getting any kind of sun out of this side at all. So just for view, just for viewing purposes. And then sooner or later, maybe next year, we'll put in a. Uh, a balcony down there or something that we can walk out on because this fucking window is massive. You can literally walk through that son of a bitch. So we're going to go ahead and use that as a walkout balcony here next summer because uh, it gets awfully hot out here in the summer times and this, this southern side or this northern side of the uh, cabin stays nice and cool. So we usually cook out out here on the side of the cabin during the summers. It stays nice and cool over here in the shade. So it'd be nice to have a window here, a balcony here we can walk out onto and have something to cook out on and spend some time out on during the summers when it's not super hot. Well, you see me trying to grow some trees over there too, but they're slow going. But that's another thing. If you want trees and you live in a environment or a mountainous environment where you have spruces nearby, spruces are a good tree. They're a very fast growing tree, evergreen, so you get green all year round. And uh, yeah, they look nice, blue, especially blue spruces. So that one needs a little bit of nutrients and a little bit of uh, tender loving care. But <laughs> other than that, I haven't done much to it besides water once every few weeks and it's taken root and uh, it's doing fine. It's been there for about five, six months now. So either way. Onto project here, like I was saying, I'll slap this window in here. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't get the rest of the documentation down, but essentially, what you're doing when you go ahead and put a window in, you'll have your studs in there, 24 inches on center or 16 inches on center, wherever you have them. And you want to remove those studs, you want to measure out the opening for the window, you want to move from one stud to the other, and try to have studs on either side. And you want to put a header in, which is usually a 2x6 or 2x12 across the top and across the bottom. And that adds rigidity to the wall. Otherwise, you're using the frame of the window as, you know, as rigidity as a structural support for the wall. So you don't want that window, especially if you have any kind of wind or shifting in the house or anything like that. You don't want that wall to shift and shift on the frame of the window itself and end up breaking your glass or causing leaks and all that stuff. So you want to cut out the hole big enough for that inside lip. Typically, you want it to go to the outside here. So you want it to the flange here. You want that flange on the outside. But since it's we, I'm here by myself and I'm not trying to maneuver around out there, even though I did leave a lip there for all that. But we're not trying to do all that. It's a big, giant, heavy window. So what we're going to end up doing is just uh, putting that flange on the inside and sealing the shit of it on the outside. So if we end up putting that flange on the inside, like here, and we have a small gap out uh, here where water can get in across the top and so forth. So what we'll end up doing is sealing that real, real good with some nice caulking and then come back over some flashing material just to add some redundant uh, sealing there. You just don't want water to get behind the, the jam of that and start to cause problems. But out here, we're gonna get a lot of rain, we get snow and with the roughing material up there, I doubt we're gonna get any kind of moisture or anything up here on the seal. So it could be all good. So like I said, windows aren't really as hard as you think they are. The biggest thing is just cutting out the hole and putting headers in to ensure that the hole stays square when the, uh, you know, for structural support reasons. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll see the finished product. Another thing I like to use is Sawzall, especially these handy ones here. They work great at getting intricate places and getting intricate cuts and getting everything cut out square and everything. Or jigsaw work too, but it's nice to wall hand, handheld uh, jigsaw or Sawzall works great. But a Sawzall is probably one of the better things you want to use or a jigsaw to cut out the hole. And drop the window in, screw it down, seal it up. All right, so we got the window in. When you put your windows in, you want to make sure you shank. So you're going to have some gaps around the edges. You're not trying to, you want to seal it, yes, but you don't want to be like, hey, I have to have this perfect because you're not going to get it perfect. You're going to have to use shims, two by fours, one by us, whatever, shim pieces, and shim up the sides so you get the, le the window level. Then you want to check to make sure it's a level all the way. You can see that or not. Not the brightest, but anyway, use a level, make sure the window's level, strip them down horizontally, vertically, whatever, and then uh, use your shims and then fasten the window into place. And then typically, you want to put some caulking over before you sit that shit in there, but it was it's messy when you do that, and I'll still size it up. 
but you just want to cock all the way around these edges and not use gap filling foam. And like I said, usually you want to put the window from the outside in. But with one man band here, <laughs> we're putting it from the inside out and we'll make it work well. Let's get it clear. It ain't money that I can't hear. Don't you go back.